Well, I'm gonna do like we did last time. We're gonna have the unedited, unfiltered. Are you gonna trim it off this time? No, 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 no. And it's live right now. I love it. And they I need, love to, it. need to see that, man. That this is not fake. I mean, this is this is real life. <laughs> so, welcome. This is this is episode number two of something uh, my my now famous sidekick Justin and I call. Uh, we're we're better together. Um, we're gonna continue to do this again as the announcement has been made that the 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 collaborative churches of Red Wine and of Chicopee and of Candler, this area of South Hall, um, we're going to do ministry together, and we're going to call this whole thing shared ministry, and we're going to start this by having th this pastoral thing that you see here on your screens as a model for how we are going to do ministry powerfully together, so, mm -hmm. so thank you again for, for sharing uh, this time with us. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something I don't normally do is I'm going to shut up and, and I'm going to turn it right over here to Justin. And and before we, we came on, before we hit that live button, um, we, we were just kind of talking about some things. Um, but as we unpacked last time, J Justin is coming here as somebody younger than me. OK, you may not. That is tell, true. He, he's younger than me. Let's <laughs> on it. But but his focus is going to be on our, on our middle schoolers, our high schoolers our college age folks and, and knowing that that's going to be part of his vocation and the part of his, a part of this role. But as we look at this shared ministry, I'm going to let him unpack it some more. It's not just about the two of us. Yeah. We're, we're sharing this together. So Justin, yeah. welcome from Polk County from where you're sitting. Yes. Um, but begin to share as we talk about shared ministry together here in episode two, you're on man. Yeah. So man, I uh, had such a wonderful time in, in South Hall visiting uh, Chicopee first and then coming over to uh, Red Wine. And the, um, the two places are unique and I love it. I love that they're uh, beautiful and they're different and that, um, that they will be better together. And we will be better together because we're combining uh, those two and actually three churches. Um, Candler, you are not forgotten. You're not left out. We love you. We're excited to be in ministry with you. Um, my kids just could not have handled another hour anywhere else. They were, uh, if you, if you were at Red Wine about six thirty uh, Sunday, I'm sorry that you saw Wellington in his, uh, in his state. Um, but man, we were so excited to be with you. Uh, yes. If shook hands or waved or talked, um, man, we are grateful for the way that you're in ministry, that you're serving, that you've already loved me and my family, my wife and my children. Uh, man, we can't wait uh, to be in ministry with y'all in the present in, um, in what we're doing. And, and as Brian said, we had talked a little bit about uh, my visit and, and what things look like. And um one of the things that I think that we've done in society is that we've said that Brian and I are the paid pastoral folks. And so we're the ones in ministry and everyone else is a spectator. And I want to come on before I ever step foot on campus. I know that's not what Brian's been telling y'all. Um, I know I've watched his sermons. I know exactly what he's been telling that you're changing the world, not Brian's changing the world. We're changing the world. He's listening, y'all. I paid attention. Um, this is not a youth ministry or a young adult ministry or a young people ministry. That's going to be my ministry. Mm. Yes, that is what I will be paid to do. But I want to look at Psalm 78 as kind of a real basis for this. So if you have a Bible, open it. Um, if you don't have a Bible, uh, listen um, and get your Bible later. Um, Psalm 78, I'm going to be reading out of the NIV in this version. I know NIV can be any type of thing, but uh, here, listen to Psalm 78 verses one through eight. My people hear my teaching, listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. Things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power 
and the wonders he has done. His decreed statues for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children so that the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they, turn, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but they would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. I mean, that's the word of God right there. And, and here's what I know. All right. Brian told you I am younger than he is. Uh, and that's years. true. A couple of years couple years uh you know five ten years um <laughs> i wish <laughs> but there are praiseworthy deeds that god has done in his life that i need to hear mm. god has moved in miraculous and wonderful ways and i need to hear the way that god has moved in brian's life mm. in the same way when i met the folks on Chicopee on Sunday. Man. God has done a powerful and magnificent work in the lives of those folks at Chicopee and at Red Wine. Yes. And here's what I know, that when we start doing ministry with young people, that they will need to hear the praiseworthy deeds of God. Amen. That that church has been in ministry for nearly a hundred years, serving and working together so that God could be glorified and God could be magnified yes. the same way as we get to red wine and the same way as we get to Candler. God has worked in some of your lives long before we were born. I met someone who's been preaching um, at red wine. She, she probably preached well before I was considered um, in life. And God has done magnificent and powerful things through her and through her testimony. And it will be absolutely crucial that she be in ministry with us and that yep. she come alongside and tell the praiseworthy deeds of God. Mm. As we walk and as we begin where we're going, I'm excited to be your paid ministry leader in this. I'm excited to be appointed me, me, me too. I'm excited you're coming too. Yes. I can't be the only one who's experienced the praiseworthy deeds of God. I know that's not true. I know the God that we serve is too big and God will need and require that you come help us learn about the praiseworthy deeds of God in your own life, because everyone's not going to resonate. Everyone's not going to experience God just out of my story, mm -hmm. right? Like, Paul was not the only one in the New Testament telling about Christ. He was the one who wrote the most and got the most letters published in the canon. But there were other people who were telling about the praiseworthy deeds of Christ, and they spread the gospel. As we come, uh, and as, as Brian joins the Chicopee family, um, as I join the Candler, Chicopee, and Red Wine families, um, we're only a very small part of all the praiseworthy deeds that God has done. And so I'm excited to be in ministry with you. Um, I will not be your sole ministry person because I can't be. Um, God, has, God is way too big for me to be the only person to make disciples, for Brian to be the only, for Denise, for Celeste, for the nursery folks, for the janitorial staff, for... Um, the SPRC and the trustees and the administrative board over at Chicopee. And they can't be the only ones. Y'all can't be the only ones who have praiseworthy deeds. We all have them. And so um, I'm counting on you because I have two small kids and they need to hear about the praiseworthy deeds in your life. And if they don't, uh, their baptismal vows will not be upheld. Ooh. So uh, I hope that you understand that uh, when you baptized a baby, you said with God's help, you will order yourself as an example so that surrounding these children, they'll be surrounded by steadfast love and established in faith. You took that vow and I'm, I plan on holding you to it. So did, did y'all just catch that? He moved from preaching to meddling right there. Y'all, <laughs> he went into a Jesus meddling mode. And it's awesome. 
So that, that's what brings us here to what all of this now, the, the shared ministry and that we're better together looks like. It, it's, it's not about two. It, it's about all of us together with all the beautiful gifts, all the beautiful talents, all the beautiful ways that we're called to invest into the kingdom. So um, looking forward to putting some more flesh on that. So, so thank you, Justin. That was a beautiful way to, to really expound on why we're bringing you in, but yeah. for the culture that we're trying to create together. So um, love you all. We're better together. We go, go, go and change the world. Right, Justin? Absolutely. Be there. If you, if you change something for the better today, then you've done it. So then you get to do it again tomorrow. So, love you. Excited. See you for episode three. Next All right. We love you guys. We're so excited to be there with you. And thank you, Brian, and excited to work alongside with you. Uh, I think we will be better together. Oh, no question. Love, love, peace, Jesus. See ya. Amen. Amen.